Hello and welcome to this lesson video where we're, we will learn about how to prepare mass diagrams uh, derive or um, uh, earth moving planning uh, insights from them and use them to identify balance catafel operation zones. The video covers the shown two learning objectives. Uh, mass diagrams are very useful in linear earth moving projects uh, like roadways and airstrips where the dimensions along the project profile are much longer than those in its uh, cross-section uh, view. Mass diagrams with the help of uh, profile views can help the project managers to visualize better the earth moving scope and plan more efficient cut to fill CTF operations. Although mass uh, diagrams are specific to linear projects, but its balancing principles and methodology can still apply to other uh, types of mass and structural uh, excavations. Specifically, mass diagrams can be useful in finding uh, the shown planning parameters. A single mass diagram can help in calculating the cut and fill quantities over the project profile. Based on that, on that uh, we can use the project's um, uh, mass diagram to visualize the number and boundaries of the CTF operations. For example, CTF operation, uh, for, the, for an, an example CTF operation, this row profile shows one cut and two fail areas. Mass diagrams will help in deciding to move the excavated soil from the cut area to the left area or to the right area. For each identified CTF operation, the mass diagram will help calculating the average, uh, whole lengths, and grades of the earth moving equipment. This information is critical to match the different earth moving uh, equipment, uh, like dozers, scrapers, and trucks, to their appropriate uh, whole distances to end up with an economical operation. Finally, mass diagrams can be helpful in answering a very critical question. Will the project require additional soil to be hauled to the site, or there, there is a lot of excavated soil that needs to be uh, hauled off the site? Hauling soil to and off the site is costly, and um, having a clear understanding of such long distance haul quantities is critical to produce quality bid estimates. Before we can use mass diagrams, we'll have to first make them. Mass diagrams are prepared and developed through a long process of table calculations, as shown in the com this completed one. To prepare a mass diagram table, you will need to uh, you, you will need the end areas of both cut and fill uh, at each station, and also the topsoil stripping between uh, each successive pairs of stations. Let's uh, see the coming slides how much how mass diagrams are prepared. The first step is to calculate the cut and fill volumes between each pair of successive stations using the end area uh, calculations. As you can see in this uh, cross section view, you can have both cut and fill areas uh, in the single station, like in the fifth uh, station, two plus fifty. Also, from the last uh, lesson, we'll uh, have to skip the first volume calculation uh, for the first station as we need two stations for the end area calculation. The first area, uh, end area calculation uh, will be applied for the cut and fill volumes between station 1 and 2. Uh, the fill volume is calculated as the average of both fill and area, uh, fill end area, uh, 0 and 115. Uh, square feet times the length between the two stations 50 feet. so we end up with uh, 106 bank cubic uh, me uh, yards for the first uh, volume uh, the first cut uh, volume equals zero because both stations one and two have zero cut in areas we continue applying the end area calculations for the rest of the station and successive pairs. Please notice that we are uh, using so far two different units for the cut and fill volume. 
we're using bank cubic yards for the cut volume and compacted cubic yards for the cut volume and uh, cubic yards for the, for the fill volume. Uh, remember, the dimensions of the cut area are for the soil and its natural uh, bank state, while the dimensions of the fill area of the section are of the soil after it is compacted. The second step is to revise the cut and fill volumes we just calculated to account for the need for stripping the topsoil uh, in the site. Topsoil is a natural organic surface material, usually up to three feet deep from the natural surface grade. This topsoil typically has no good use in construction to build embankments or backfills. So they are disposed in outside dump sites unless the project calls for reusing them uh, to maintain the site natural vegetation as part of the final project. From the geotechnical report and the cross-section views, the topsoil stripping volume is provided for uh, both the cut and fill part of each uh, station segment. The topsoil stripping volume is calculated based on the footprint of the cut and fill areas from the layout view times the stripping depth as recommended by the geotechnical uh, soil report. Now, how these topsoil volumes should affect the cut and fill volumes we calculated from the previous step. To understand the topsoil impact, we need to follow the cut and fill sequence and acknowledge uh, that their depth, are provi depth uh, 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 is provided based on the natural surface grade, which is the surface uh, surface of the topsoil. For a fill section, the contractor cannot fill on top of the topsoil because the topsoil lacks the structural strength to provide strong embankment and sub-base for the road or taxiway. So the contractor will have to strip the topsoil first, fill this void that was just stripped, and then fill the actual embankment that is uh, shown in the section view. As such, we are filling more than we initially thought. So we uh, end up with adding the stripping volume below uh, the fill area to the fill volume we calculated in the previous step. On the other hand, the cut area will be stripped first uh, to get off the uh, no-use topsoil before cutting the good soil that can be reused to fill the uh, other areas of the project. So initially, uh, the, our initially calculated cut volumes need to be reduced by the topsoil stripping volumes on top of the related cut areas. To summarize, topsoil compl complicated CTF operations for the contractor because it's, uh, it reduces the soil cut material that can be available for fill and and it also increases the fill volumes to compensate for the stripping void left behind uh, the, the, the topsoil. So we expand uh, the table with two um, more columns. In, the, in column 8, we update the cut volume by deducting the stripping done at the cut part of the segment. Uh, for example, for segment between stations 5 and 6. Uh, we deduct 26 bank cubic yards from the cut volume and we end up with the revised volume of 144 bank cubic yards. On the other hand, the fill uh, volume uh, volumes are revised in column 9 by adding uh, the stripping at the fill segment to the fill volume list in, in column uh, 5. For example, the fill volume of the first segment uh, between stations 1 and 2 is increased from 106 to 124 by adding the stripping fill volume value in column 7. The next step is where we bring the cut and fill volumes to an apple to apple values. Remember that we are preparing this uh, mass diagram to be able to balance the cut and fill volumes, which we can do, we cannot do if they have different measurement units. So 
we are transferring the fill quantities um, from compacted cubic yards to bank cubic yards by dividing uh, the uh, uh, over the complement of the shrinkage percentage value. Please refer to the previous lesson where we covered the soil properties to review the soil transformation between bank and compacted states. Almost there. The next step is to get the algebraic sum of the cut and fill quantities of each segment by subtracting, subtracting the fill volume from the cut volume. As such, we consider cut volumes positive and fill volumes negative. And finally, we calculate the mass ordinate at each station of uh, end of each segment. The mass ordinate is another name for cumulative sum, where we add up the cut volume, uh, cut fill volume algebraic sums from the start to the end of the project. By this, the mass ordinate will give us a good idea about the cut fill balance uh, from the beginning of the project to any point along its length. If the mass ordinate is negative, this means that there is more fill than cut up to this point of the project. Now we can plot the mass ordinate to have the mass diagram. The mass ordinate is shown on the vertical uh, axis and the project length or stations uh, as shown along the uh, horizontal axis. I'm showing here a profile view and it's uh, corresponding mass diagram, which both provide a full story of the cut and fill work. Starting from the left, the profile shows cut segment from point A to B, and then a fill segment from point uh, B to C. You can see that the mass diagram is ascending in the cut segment, and then flattening at the point where the profile and natural grade intersect and then descending in the fill segment. This is because we add the cut volumes to the mass ordinate and deducting the fill volumes from the mass ordinate, as shown in the mass diagram table cut measure. Now we can visualize the balance CTF uh, zones where the cut volume is sufficient to balance the fill volume. We identify the balance zone by drawing a horizontal line along the mass diagram and crossing it in two points. The balance line uh, we draw here visualizes a CTF hole operation that's moving the dirt from the left cut segment to the right, cut, uh, right fill segment while knowing the start and end points of the balance zoom, meaning point A and point C. Now visualize, we can visualize the balance uh, CTF zones where the cut uh, volume is sufficient to balance the fill volume. Sorry. And the CTF operation is balanced because the whole quantity Q as the height of the mass diagram contained by the balance line equals the soil cut volume and is used uh, for the fill volume. Interestingly, uh, we can split a balance zone into smaller subzones by drawing more uh, balance line. Each balance subzone will represent a separate CTF operation with a different equipment, like we see in the next lesson. On the screen, we created two balanced CTF operations by drawing two balanced lines through the mass diagram. The whole quantity of each CTF operation equals the mass ordinate delta contained between uh, the mass diagram and the relevant balance lines. For the first CTF operation, the whole quantity is between the mass ordinates at point B and the points of the first balance line points E and points F. The quantity of the second CTF operation is the mass ordinate difference between the mass diagram uh, intersects of the two balance lines. 
The first whole quantity is cut from uh, segment EB, hold and then filled uh, in segment BF. The second whole quantity is cut from segments AE, hold for a longer distance and filled in segment FC. This is another example where you can see two balanced CTF uh, zones and they're all directions. But we can see here that there is a, a last segment of the project that was not included in any of the balanced zones. That one between points E and F. From the profile view, this is a, a cut segment, but the resulting soil has no place to be used as a fill. So this uh, soil material has no use on the side and needs to be hauled off the site. This is what, why we call this project a waste uh, project because we are wasting uh, an excavated soil and instead of recycling it within the project, which is not feasible with the project design geometry. As a hint, you can identify a waste project by finding a positive mass ordinate value at its uh, ending station. This is another example with four balanced CTF zones, but we see uh, now a case of a borrow project. We can know that by we, we can know that by seeing a fill segment at uh, that is not part uh, of any balanced zone, and the negative mass ordinate at the uh, ending station of the project. For a borrow project, the contractor will have to buy dirt and haul it to the site for this unbalanced fill segment of the project. This is the end of this uh, video where you learn about the uh, mass diagrams, their preparation and their use to identify balanced uh, cut to fill operations. In the next lessons we will use how we'll uh, uh, see how to use mass diagrams to prepare more detailed uh, CTF operation plans by specifying their appropriate equipment and their whole operation attributes.